Welcome everybody to the Parallel Programming in Computational Engineering and Science course. My name is Matthias Müller, I'm the director of the IT Center. And first of all, I'm glad that so many of you came. Because of course, we always think it's interesting to have parallel programming and it's important for the future because nowadays even a mobile phone has parallel CPUs inside. But we also like it very much that you think it's important and that you come here for a week to learn about parallel programming. I will give a very short introduction of who we are and talk a little bit about what you will learn this week and then I will hand over to the technical experts who start teaching you in parallel programming. So you are here at the IT Center of RWTH Aachen University and we always keep improving things, for example the color scheme. <laughs> but we do a lot of general IT services for the university. Yeah. So when you use the communication infrastructure, the wireless LAN, when you use the central email service, when you use backup, you always use services that we either host or maintain or operate. But we also do more specific services like high performance computing and the immersive visualization where we not only do the service, so hosting the systems, but also do research to basically think about how do we need to maintain those systems in the future. And I will show you a little bit about that. So in Germany and in also some other countries, the provisioning of HPC systems is organized in, in a kind of pyramid, where at the top end you have the European or national centers that have the biggest supercomputers, and then you basically go down the pyramid where you have regional centers from the different states or local institute clusters. And we in, in Aachen basically are in this regional level, so responsible for North Westphalia. But uh, also we have something special, and that is this Yara HPC. Yara stands for Jülich Aachen Research Alliance. And there we jointly with Jülich operate systems and take care that basically we provide services in between the tier one centers, that are the national centers, and the tier two centers, which are the local centers of the states. So here we have a joint operation of systems. For example, you can apply for compute time. And then we have shared partitions either on the blue gene system in Jülich or at our cluster. Coming back to the computer center, we have a specific department called CSE that focuses on everything around computational science and engineering that consists on three groups. So one is the VR group, VR is for virtual reality. So they not only operate the cave, but they also provide lectures and they do research for immersive visualization. Then the lecturers of, t of this week are mostly coming from the second group, the HPC group, where again, we not only operate or support the HPC systems, but we also do a lot of research and provide lectures around high performance computing. And th the second group, uh, the third group is a little bit different that we don't do research, but we do a lot of education. So we organize the training or the education for the uh, MATSE. MATSE stands for Mathematisch Technischer Software Entwickler. So this is a mathematic technical software developer. And this is a joint program where you all also get a degree, a bachelor degree in scientific programming from the FA Aachen. And this is very important for the university because there a lot of people learn how to program scientific software for HPC systems. So what kind of research do we do in HPC? So basically we think it's our responsibility to basically keep the HPC systems not only usable but also programmable. And therefore we do research in how to program those systems in the best way. Our focus there are on shared memory programming, so mostly OpenMP. But of course so we also look into other paradigms and we see how, what kind of features the different paradigms have and, and what we can use for the future development of OpenMP. And in order to basically drive those future developments, we also participate in the standard body of OpenMP. This is called the Architecture Review Board. There we also participate so to make sure that the right features come into the next evolution of the standard. And then of course we look into other topics like how to write correct programs, how to find bug in an easy way, and how to basically make use of future architecture. So we do a lot of analysis on what our future 
systems, what kind of performance features they have, and what kind of things we need to know or you need to know to program those systems. Because, as I said, the performance of HPC systems is still evolving fast, which is nice for you because you get faster and faster systems. And here in red, you see the systems we have in Aachen. So you see currently we have a system that still is uh, in the top 500. So it's among the 500 fastest systems in the world. But it's slowly falling out of that list. So in comparison to other systems, it's getting slower and slower. And we already think about what will be the next system, how should it be s designed, and we hope to be beyond the petaflop with the next procurement that we expect to have in 2015, 2017. I told you that we look into future architectures. I mean, now people talk about the fastest supercomputers. Everybody talks about accelerators, either using graphic cards like the Kepler K K20 or the Xeon Phi, or codename Mike. We also have those systems here. We use them on the one hand to drive the cave, and during the nighttime we also use it for simulation. And then we have a small Mike cluster with six nodes with Xeon Phi, so to get some experience of, of how to use those systems and whether they are useful for the next big system that we plan to buy. I already mentioned the cave. This is something very useful for you if you have large data sets to explore and analyze, because in this visualization system you can really explore large data sets jointly with our experts. And it's currently not, one, not only one of the largest caves in the world, but also a very high quality installation with very high contrast, with very nice and interactive way to, to navigate through your data and, and analyze what you have done in your simulation. Because many times nowadays, it's not the simulation that is the bottleneck, but it's really the pre-processing and the post-processing of the data. And there, this system helps a lot. So as a summary, systems are getting bigger and bigger. And when you want to exploit the power of those systems, then you really have to look into parallel computing and parallel programming, because exploiting the concurrency is really the key thing you have to do. And here we have a lot of research topics in our group that takes care about how to program those systems best. And I'm sure that whatever question you ask during this week, we find some expert who can answer the question. And if they don't find the expert who can answer the question, they at least know somebody who knows the answer. So don't be shy. Just ask everything you need to know. And there's a lot of breaks and stuff so you can answer uh, uh, the ask the questions. Here, short look on the agenda. So we are in the welcome and introduction. And the rest of the day, basically, you will learn the basics of parallel programming. Because before you start programming the systems, you have to get it kind of rough understanding of how parallel architectures look. And then tomorrow you will learn about message passing, how to program distributed memory systems. Then on Wednesday you will start shared memory programming, first with classical OpenMP, and then the reminder of the week uh, on accelerators, see on Phi on Thursday, and some graphic cards on Friday. There's also, as I mentioned, lunch and coffee breaks, and I should mention, last not least, the social event, where we also have a sponsor, because otherwise we couldn't pay for the dinner. So we should also all, all be grateful for the sponsoring. And this is Bull, who, who gave us some money to basically pay for your food. And also, I think there's some sponsoring the coffee breaks already. So even today, you can enjoy the sponsoring. And Christian will tell you more about what you need to know to get, get the food, not only in the coffee breaks, but also in the lunch breaks. Thank you very much.